Hi there, my name is Jakub and I work as a developer relations engineer at Epic Games. This video will show you how I used Reality Capture, Quixel Mixer and Twinmotion to build this simple scene. Reality Capture is a photogrammetry software that can automatically create virtual reality scenes, texture 3D meshes, orthographic projections, georeferenced maps and much more from images and laser scans. It's worth mentioning that the entire Quixel Megascans library was created with the help of Reality Capture. Quixel Mixer is a free, user-friendly, layer-based texture creation and texture mixing software. It seamlessly fuses scan data, physically-based rendering painting and procedural authoring. What's more, Unreal Engine users also have access to the entire Megascans library for free with the Mixer. Twinmotion is a cutting-edge, real-time 3D rendering software based on Unreal Engine. With the power of Unreal Engine, it can create high-quality images, panoramas, presentations and standard or 360 VR videos. It is mainly used for architectural visualizations. Twinmotion has an unlimited free trial for non-commercial projects and has the entire Quixel Megascans library at your disposal. I am from the Capturing Reality team, so I know the ins and outs of Reality Capture but I'm a total beginner in Quixel Mixer and Twinmotion. However, I was able to familiarize myself with both of them in a couple of hours. Both have great online tutorials, so I recommend you to check out Quixel's and Twinmotion's YouTube channels and other documentation. In this video, I will process two assets in Reality Capture. The first will be this old abandoned chapel. I scanned it myself with a mirrorless camera and a drone, both from the inside and the outside. The second asset will be this small clay jug. Again, I scanned it myself at home with a mirrorless camera and a flash. First, I placed the jug on a table and scanned it from one side. After I finished, I flipped it over and scanned it from the other side. I will show you how to merge both sides in Reality Capture with the use of masks. Then I will bring the jug to Mixer and retexture it with a pre-made smart material. This way I will have two variants of the jug that I can use in the scene. It will not be very obvious in the scene, that's why I won't spend too much time on it, but small details do matter. Finally, I'll bring all of the assets to Twinmotion and build a scene. I'll be working in Twinmotion 2022.1 preview because of its impressive new features and new demo scene that I will use as a basis for my project. So without any further ado, let's jump to Reality Capture. Now we are in Reality Capture and the first thing I need to do is to import the images. Now there's a couple of ways how I can do that. I can use the Add Inputs icon to add individual photos or selections of photos. I can use the Add Folder icon to import entire folders. Or I can drag and drop the photos straight into the user interface. So I already have my Explorer window prepared over here. I'm in my Chapel folder. And in it I have two folders. One for the drone images and one folder with the ground images. And I can just select both of them like this and drag and drop them into the user interface. Now I can put this aside. And right away we can see that the images are loaded in this 2DS view. I can browse through the image thumbnails and if I click on one of the images it will be displayed in this large 2D view. Now the next step I'm going to take is to align the images. I can run the alignment from the workflow tab by clicking on align images or I can go to the alignment tab which provides more tools for the alignment and click on align images here. The shortcut is F6. During this phase, Reality Capture is detecting features in the images and it matches these between neighboring images. That's why photogrammetry needs high overlap between them. RC then uses these matches to calculate the position and orientation of the cameras and these features in the 3D space. Once the alignment is finished, we will see a sparse point cloud in the 3D view. The alignment is finished and now we can see the features in the 3D space in form of a point cloud. And we can also see the camera positions. To navigate the 3D view, we can use the left mouse button to pan, the right mouse button to rotate, and the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. After the alignment, I recommend you save your project for the first time. I've already done that, but if you want to save your project, click on the Reality Capture icon, click on Save As, and save it somewhere on your drive. Now I will switch the 2DS view to 1DS. This view contains the project structure. Here I have my images and you can see that I have 1838 images. The project can also contain control points, which I will use just in a moment. And I have the component number zero, which includes 1833 out of 1838 cameras. 
That means that almost every camera in the dataset was aligned. If you want to see which cameras were not aligned, I can switch the 1DS back to the 2DS, go to the Scene 2D View tab, and click on Show Unregistered. And here we will see which images were not aligned. So if I click on one, for example, this one, we can clearly see the reason why it was not aligned. It's because it was blurry. You can see that when I clicked on the image, a new 2D view window opened. Reality Capture has a bunch of layouts for you to choose from. And these layouts support different kinds of workflows, which I will demonstrate right now. I will give the model some scale because I don't want to scale the chapel in twin motion manually because I would never accurately match it to the real world. For scaling the object, I will use control points and a distance constraint. To place the control points, I will go to the 3D Scene Tools tab and activate the Control Points tool over here. Or I can use the shortcut F3. Now, when I move my mouse cursor over the sparse point cloud, I get some image suggestions in the right 2D view. These are the images that can see where my mouse cursor is. I want to place one control point on this side of the chapel. I want to place it on this little dark spot. Left mouse button to place it. I'll place the second control point on the other side of the chapel. So I'll zoom into this area and pick this spot. I don't have to place the control points very accurately because I will need to confirm them in the images. I'll have an opportunity to edit them. To disable the Add Control Points tool, I'll click on the tool again. Now I have a couple of image suggestions for both of the control points. I'm going to left click on the first one for control point number zero. I can zoom in with the mouse scroll wheel to this place and I will left click and hold the control point. Now I can move it around. But I placed it fairly accurately, so I will adjust it into the middle of this dark spot and release the left mouse button. Now the position of this control point is confirmed. The image is also highlighted in the 1DS view. To switch to the next image, I can simply click on it here in the 1DS, or I can use the down arrow key while this 2D view is selected. I know that it's selected by this blue outline. Okay, and if I want to find the control point, I will press F on the keyboard to frame it. To confirm it, again I will left click and hold, move it, but this time I will not release the left mouse button. I will press the down arrow key instead. I'm still holding the left mouse button, but by doing it this way, it will be confirmed and Reality Capture will switch to the next image suggestion. Now we can see that this image is a little bit blurry, so I can delete it from the image suggestions by pressing delete on the keyboard. This one looks a bit better, so I can place the control point here and again confirm it by pressing the down arrow key. And let's do a couple more. That should be enough. We recommend defining each control point on at least two to five images. Now I still need to confirm control point number one, so I will click on the first image, select the view and press F to frame it. Here I'm just doing the same thing all over again. Left click and hold to move the cursor and then the down arrow key to confirm and switch to the next image suggestion. That should be enough. All right, the control points are now confirmed and I can use them to define the distance constraint. Define distance constraint is also located in the Scene 3D Tools tab. Now the tool is activated and to place it, I'll move the mouse cursor to the first control point. Now it is highlighted, so I'll click on it. Now I'm dragging the distance constraint from this control point and to connect it to the second one, I will move my mouse cursor to it and once it's highlighted, I will click again. Okay, now I can disable the Define Distance tool and I need to tell RC the actual distance. I made the measurement when I was scanning this chapel and it was 5 meters and 36 centimeters. Down here in the 1DS, I will type in 5.36 meters in the Define Distance field. Now we can see a huge error over here, but that's not a problem. I'll fix it by applying the scale. I'll go to the Alignment tab and click on Update. This will not create a new component, it will just apply the scale to the existing component. You can update the scale even with a reconstructed model. Realigning the images would also apply the scale, but it would create a new component. Models don't transfer because they wouldn't match the realigned cameras. The update is finished and also the distance constraint was applied. I think that I can change the layout back to 1 plus 1 so I have a single large 3D view. The next steps will be to set the ground plane, set the reconstruction region, and create the model. To set the ground plane, I will go to the Scene 3D Tools tab and click on Set Ground Plane. Now I can move and rotate the model with this gizmo. 
I like to do this in the orthographic views. So I'll go to the scene 3D view and change my view to the top view. I will just align the model with the grid like this. Now I will jump to the next view, which is the left view like this. And I'll just the ground level. You can also switch between these views with the number keys on the number pad. Perspective view is number zero on the number pad. Number two is for the top view. And number four is the left view. Now I need to adjust this box and we call it the reconstruction region. Reality Capture will reconstruct everything that is inside of this region. I'll go to the Scene 3D Tools tab again, disable the Set Ground Plane, and click on Set Reconstruction Region and set it automatically. This will align it nicely with the grid. Same as the Ground Plane, I also like to adjust it in the orthographic views. So I'll go to the top view first and adjust the sides. Next, I'll go to the left view like this with the number 4 on the number pad, and I'm going to align the bottom and the top of the reconstruction region so nothing is clipped. Back to the perspective view with number zero, and now we can start reconstructing the model. And to do that, I will go to the Mesh Model tab and click on Normal Detail. Normal Detail will not use the original full resolution images, but it will use them with the downscale set to two. I plan to simplify the model afterwards so it runs smoothly in Finmotion, so the normal detail is good enough. The model reconstruction is now finished and it's being rendered in a form of a very dense point cloud. And the reason for this is that this model has over 350 million triangles. At this moment, that's not possible to render smoothly in reality capture. To perform smoothly, RC has an upper limit of 40 million triangles. Now, if you want to see the surface of the mesh in the 3D viewport, you either must simplify it under 40 million or you can use the clipping box to just see a certain part. I can create the clipping box by going to the Scene 3D View tab, click on Clipping Box, and I will create it from the reconstruction region. All right, now I will click on Edit Clipping Box, and I will make it smaller with the box widget. Maybe I can focus on the entrance over here. And to see the surface, make sure you are in the Solid Scene Render Mode. That was just for demonstration. Now I will clear it because I want to see the entire chapel. Next step is going to be cleaning the model because there are some floating parts of a tree around here and I will show you how to get rid of them. I'll go to the Scene 3D Tools tab and use the Advanced Selection tool. I will click on Select the Largest Connected Component. Of course, that will be the chapel. The Largest Connected Component is selected and now I will use this Invert command to invert the selection. In addition, I will use this Select Marginal Triangles tool because when Reality Capture creates a model, it makes it watertight. That means that the bottom is filled with large triangles, and I want to get rid of them. If I would just click on Select, it would override the current selection. But if I press Ctrl and click, it will add to the current selection. And now I can just click on Filter Selection, and it will get rid of the selected parts. After filtering, RC created a new model. That means that I can always go back to the source, unless I delete it, of course. The next step is to texture the model. To texture it, I'll go to the Mesh Model tab, and first I'll check the texturing settings. I am most interested in the default unwrap parameters, because this is where I'm going to set the maximal texture resolution and the texturing style. Maximal resolution means that RC can go up to this resolution, but if it's not needed, it will use a lower resolution. For example, you can set it to 16K, but if you scan something very small, the 16K texture will not be utilized because the maximal texture quality from the images can fit a 4K texture. When the style is set to maximal texture count, I can set the maximal number of textures that I would like. Again, this is just the limit. If RC needs just one texture to reach the maximal texture quality from the images, it will not create more. RC is smart enough to combine the maximal texture size and maximal texture count to get the best texture utilization even for meshes with hundreds of millions of triangles. If you want to make sure that you will get the best possible texture quality from the images, you need to change the style to fixed textile size and set the textile size to optimal. With this style, there is no limit for the number of textures. RC will generate as many as needed to achieve the best texture resolution with the optimal textile size. If you want to first unwrap the model without texturing it, you can use the separate unwrap tool. I personally prefer this way because I have little more control and I can preview how many textures my model will have before texturing. 
In addition, we can check the actual optimal texel size. In my case, it's 0.6 millimeters. Gutter, or in other words, padding, is the spacing between UV islands in pixels. By default, it is set to 2. I'll keep the maximal texture resolution at 16K. Large triangle removal threshold. If a triangle edge is this value times longer than the average edge of all edges, it will be mapped to just one texel. This setting here is because of the large triangles that RC uses to fill out the missing parts of the model. I'll keep the style set to fixed texel size. Coordinate system and units are here just for your information and cannot be changed. Finally, I can set the texel size. If it's on optimal, it's going to be 0.6 millimeters. I can also change it to multiples of the optimal texel size, or I can set it to a custom value. 0.01 would be one centimeter in my case, because I scaled my scene with the distance constraint. I want to get the best possible quality, so I will keep it at optimal and click on unwrap. After the unwrap, let's check how many textures my model has with the current unwrap settings. And it's nine 16K textures, which is a lot. Now, when I click on texture, RC will use the current unwrap and it will not use the unwrap parameters in the texturing settings. Now the model is textured and I can consider this model to be my cleaned high poly model with nine 16K textures. For using it in twin motion, I'll simplify it to one million polygons and one 16K texture. The simplify tool is located in the scene 3D tools tab here. I'll keep the type set to absolute because relative type simplifies by a percentage. The target triangle count is going to be 1 million. After the simplification, I want to bake the color and the normal map, so I need to make sure that the color reprojection is enabled and also the normal reprojection is enabled. And here are the unwrap parameters for the simplified model. I want the maximal texture count to be custom and I'll set it to one. Maximal texture resolution can remain the same as source because it's 16K, which is what I want. And that's it. Now I'll click on simplify. The simplification process is now finished. So I got a new model number three. It has 1 million triangles and also it has a single 16K texture. Because I enabled the color and normal reprojection, it now has two texture layers. If you still see only the point cloud in the 3D view and you want to see the mesh surface, now you can. You can go to the scene 3D view tab and click on the suite render mode. This will load the texture and the mesh surface. And I think that this single 16K texture will be good enough for my scene in Finmotion. Now I'm going to export this simplified model. I can do that in a couple of ways. I can use this mesh and point cloud export option in the 3D tools tab, or I can use the export option in the workflow tab or the file menu. Just a reminder that the model I want to export needs to be selected. Here I can use the filter field to search for my desired file format, OBJ. But it is also in my recently used format since I recently used it. I need to select the folder where I want to save it and also give it a name. In the export dialog, I'll change a couple of settings. I want to export the normals, but I don't need the vertex colors because I'll use the texture instead. By enabling the normals, the model will have a smooth shading effect in twin motion. For the texturing settings, I'll keep everything at the defaults. I just need to make sure to export both the color and the normal map. Both of them will going to be in PNG format. The final thing I need to check is the export coordinate system. I'll use the grid coordinate system, which is the coordinate system of the viewport. To match the scale and orientation in twin motion, I'll change the transformation preset from default to unreal. If you are curious what this preset does, I can expand this and see that it scales the model 100 times. And it also flips the Y channel of the normal map. And that's it, now I'll click on OK. The export is finished, so I'm done with this asset and now I can start processing the jug. I created a new project and this time the workflow will be slightly different. I need to process the two halves separately, merge them into a single component and from that moment, the processing will be precisely the same. So first, I need to import my images. Here's my explorer, and I'm in the top folder. So I'll go one level up and drag and drop the entire folder to RC. I can put this aside and align the images. The alignment is finished. 
we can see that all of the 212 cameras were aligned in a single component. The next thing I will do is to create a preview mesh out of this jug and generate masks. Later I will use these masks to merge the two sides together. First, I will adjust the reconstruction region. I will go to the top orthographic view by pressing number 2 on the number pad. I will select the reconstruction region and adjust its size with the box widget, like this. Now I will switch to the left view by pressing number 4 on the number pad and I will adjust the top and the bottom, like this. It doesn't have to be completely reconstructed. Back to the perspective view by pressing number 0 on the number pad. I will now go to the Mesh Model tab and click on Preview. This will use the sparse point cloud and triangulate it into a mesh. Alright, the surface is reconstructed. There are some unnecessary triangles that I want to get rid of, so they are not visible in the masks. I will again select the reconstruction region and move it slightly up. Like this. And now I will remove all of the unwanted triangles. To do that, I will use the Cut by Box tool. The tool is located in the Scene 3D Tools tab. Here it is, and I will open its options by clicking on it. I want to cut everything that is outside of the reconstruction region. I will click on Cut Outer. Great, so the unwanted triangles are gone, and I will continue by generating the masks. To do that, I'll use the Export Death and Mask command in the Scene 3D Tools tab. I need to set where I want to export my masks and I want them to be in the exact same folder as my source images. So this is the folder right here, so now I can click on OK. In this export dialog, I only need to change one thing. I want to disable the export camera depths because I won't be needing them. And that's it, I can click on OK. The mask export is finished, and if I bring the Explorer window and open the top folder, we can see that every single image now has a corresponding mask. These masks will tell RC to use only the parts of the images that are white. This eliminates the background and enables me to merge the two sides together. Alright, so now I will be processing the other half of the jug. At first, I will select all of the images by pressing Ctrl A. We can see that all cameras are selected now, and I'll press Ctrl R to disable them from further processing. When I deselect them by pressing Ctrl D, we can see that they are all red instead of white. Ok, so I'm going to import the other half now. I'll select the bottom folder and drag and drop it into the user interface. Now we have 534 images. To align them, I will press the shortcut F6. The other side of the jug is also aligned. That's good. But now I have two components. I'll try to keep things organized. So I will click on the component number 0 and rename it to side 1. I'll rename the second component to side 2. Now I need to generate the mask for the second side, and the workflow is exactly the same. However, I won't even bother with adjusting the reconstruction region this time. I'll just go to the Mesh Model tab and click on Create Preview Model. Now I'll select the reconstruction region. Switch to the left orthographic view by pressing number 4 on the number pad. I'll raise the bottom a bit like this. And now I'm going to use the Cut by Box tool again. It's already activated, so I'll just click on Cut Outer. Great! Number 0 on the number pad to switch to the perspective view. Just like before, I will go here and click on Export Depth and Mask. This time I'll select the bottom folder and click OK. RC remembered the settings from the last time, so everything should be good, and I will just click on OK. The mask export is finished, and let's check if they are correctly exported. I'll open the bottom folder, and it looks like everything is fine. The masks were correctly generated. In previous versions of Reality Capture, we would have to create a new project to use the masks, but not anymore. In Reality Capture 1.2, we can import the masks and continue working. So I'll select both of the folders and drag them to the user interface. As you can see, the number of images didn't change, but if I select any image and go to the Image 2D View tab, I can toggle the mask's visibility on and off. The shortcut to toggle between layers is the Tab key. Alright, so now I can switch back to the OnePlus One layout. 
Before alignment, I need to enable images from the side one. So I'll go to the component, select all of the images with Ctrl A, and press Ctrl R to enable them. And now I can press align. The alignment is finished, and I got a new component that contains all of the 534 cameras. That's good news. Before reconstructing the mesh, I will scale it like the chapel, and I'm also going to set the ground plane. First, I am going to set the ground plane. The tool is in the Scene 3D Tools tab. I will enter the left orthographic view by pressing number 4 on the number pad. I will double click in the middle of the jug right here so the gizmo moves there. And now I will rotate the entire scene. Like this, and I also want to place it on the ground. To enter the top view, I will press number 2 on the number pad. Again, I will double click in the middle of the jug and I will rotate it like this. And also move it to the center. That looks good. To get back to the perspective view, I'll press number zero on the number pad. Right mouse button click to deactivate the set ground plane gizmo. Now I want to scale the model and I have put a ruler next to the jug for this reason. But because of the masks, it is not visible in the 3D view. That is not a problem because I can place the control points directly in the images. I'll select the very first image by clicking on it and change the layout to 1 plus 1 plus 1. If you remember, I can toggle the visibility of the mask by pressing the tab key. I'll zoom to the ruler and activate the control point tool with F3. The first control point will be here. And the second control point will be on the other side. Here. I'll switch to the next image by pressing the right arrow key and first mark the second control point because it's already selected. To place the first control point number 0, I must pick it first in the 1DS and place it at the beginning of the ruler. These two control points confirmed on the two images are enough for me to define the distance constraint. To disable the control points tool, I will press F3. And to activate the distance constraint, I'll press F4. With the tool activated, I will click and hold on control point number 0, drag the line to control point number 1, and release the left mouse button. Right now, its value is 19.2 units, so I'll go to the selected constraint panel and type in 0.16 meters in the defined distance field. To apply it, I'll go to the alignment tab and press update. It's done. We can see that the constraint in the 1DS is now 0.16 meters. I noticed that I have to adjust the ground once more. So I go to the Scene 3D Tools tab to activate the Set Ground Plane tool. Go to the left view with number 4 on the number pad and place the jug on the grid. Like this. Back to the perspective view with number 0 on the number pad and I will disable the Set Ground Plane tool with the right mouse button. Because of the updated scale, the reconstruction region is now very huge. I'll click on Set Reconstruction Region, and this will automatically adjust it. Now I can reconstruct the model, and I'll use the Normal Detail preset once again. The model reconstruction is finished, so let me change my layout to 1 plus 1 so we have one large 3D view. We can see that the model has 5.6 million triangles, and we can also inspect it in the 3D view. Alright, now I need to texture it. So I'll go to the texture settings and check the unwrap parameters. This time I'll be happy with a single 4K texture. So I'll change the maximal texture resolution to 4K. Change the style to maximal texture count and set the count to 1. Now it's ready, I can click on texture. The texture is finished. As instructed, RC created a single 4K texture. And now there's one last step I need to do before exporting to Quixel Mixer, and that is to simplify it to a more reasonable polygon count and to bake the color and normal map. Like in the previous project, I will use the Simplify tool. Instead of the target triangle count set to 1 million, this time I'll set it to 10k. Color and normal reprojection is already enabled, and in the unwrap parameters, both settings can remain on the same as the source. And that's it. 
Now I'll just click on Simplify. The simplification process is finished. Reality Capture created a second model number two, this time with 10,000 triangles. Now I can finally export the model. I'll click on the RC icon, choose Export, and pick OBJ from the recently used formats. I need to make sure that I'm in the correct folder. Now I am, and this time I will make two exports. One will be for Quixel Mixer and the other for Twin Motion. The reason for the two exports is that each will have a different orientation. First, I'll export the model for Twin Motion. I'm going to create a new folder and call it TM. Obviously, this export will be for Twin Motion. For this export, I'll use the same settings as for the chapel. So I'll enable normals, disable vertex colors, and for the transformation preset, I'll use Unreal. And click on OK. For the second export, I'll create a new folder and call it QM for Quixel Mixer. The name can remain the same, so I'll call it Jug. All the settings can remain the same. I will only switch to the Blender preset in the export dialog. This will apply the correct rotation, but I'll still need to adjust the scale to 100. and this time the Y channel of the normal map will not be flipped. Finally, I can press OK. And that's it, I am finished in Reality Capture, and the next step will be to import this jug to Quixel Mixer in Retexture It. So let's jump to Mixer. All right, now that we're in Mixer, I'm going to create a new project and call it Tutorial. In this Tutorial project, I will create a new mix and call it Jug. The working resolution can remain on 2K because it won't affect the final texture during export. I can go ahead and load the model from Reality Capture. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the Setup tab here, and then I'm going to change the type from Plane to Custom Model. Now I'll select the model and click on Open. Let's go over some basic navigation. Use the middle mouse button to pan. Alt plus left mouse button to rotate and Alt plus right mouse button to zoom in and out. To change the lighting, use Shift plus right mouse button. Now that that's loaded, I'm ready to start texturing. I can add the original color texture and normal map by clicking on Edit Texture Sets, but I personally prefer another way so I have more control over the imported textures. Not that it matters because I'll completely retexture the model but I wanted to show you anyway, so you know how to edit the original texture. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Layers tab and then click on the Add Solid Layer icon right here. I'll expand Albedo by clicking on it and load my texture from RC. Now it might look strange at first, but I'll fix it. I'll expand Placement and change it from Box Projection to Tiling. Now the texture is properly mapped to the model and right away I can make some adjustments. I can play with the contrast, or I can change the albedo color. To import a normal map, let's expand normals, click on load, and select the texture. We have the option to invert to Y channel, but there's no need because it was properly exported from RC when I selected the export preset. I am ready to start texturing the model. I can start adding surface layers, decals, smart materials, solid layers, liquid layers, noise, and paint layers. At the bottom, I can add mask stacks, material IDs, or hand-painted masks. To save time and yet get a high-quality result, I will use a smart material. Smart materials are multi-layered materials that you can import into your mix with just a single click. To apply a smart material, I have to click on the Add Smart Material icon. I'll tap in Jug in the search bar, and then choose this Scratch Ceramic Jug. See how easy that was? Now this is not baked. It is a dynamic multilayer material utilizing the robust mass tag of Mixer. Everything can be dynamically adjusted. For example, I can change the tiling of the clay-based scan data to something like 0.4. Or I can change the albedo color if I want to. As I mentioned in the beginning, the Jug won't be very obvious in the scene, so this result is good enough for me. 
Now, if you're interested in how to create your own materials from scratch, I highly recommend you to watch Quixel's amazing tutorials. I'll finish up with exporting the textures so I can use them in Twinmotion. To do that, I will go up here to the Export tab. Here I got two options. I can export the model and textures directly to my local Megascans library and access it with Quixel Bridge. Quixel Bridge is another tool from the Megascans ecosystem. From Bridge, you can send your assets directly to other DCCs like Unreal Engine or Blender. In this case, I just need the textures right now, so I will set the export target to custom. I'll set my export location and set the asset name. I really don't need the model right now, so I will keep export model unchecked. For the texture maps, I will keep albedo, roughness and normal. One more thing, I need to go to the advanced texture setup. Expand normal and check inward Y channel. Mixer is using OpenGL normals and Twinmotion is using DirectX normals. That's why I need to flip the Y channel so the normal map works properly in Twinmotion. Finally, I can set the export texture resolution and click on export to disk. Alright, let's go ahead and switch to Twinmotion. Now I am in Twinmotion, so let's get started. Before I do anything else, I will load in the demo scene. I went to the Twinmotion installation folder and made a copy of the demo scene on my desktop. This is the default path to the demo scene files. I just selected everything and made a copy. I did this so I didn't modify the original demo scene. I'll go to File, Open, find the file and open it to load the scene. Here it is, so now we have something nice to look at. This is the viewport and here at the top of the screen is the navigation panel. The navigation panel contains instructions on how we can navigate the viewport. We can use the right mouse button to look around, we can use the middle mouse button to pan, and shift plus the middle mouse button to orbit. We can use the WASD keys to move around, the Q and E keys to move up and down, and we can also toggle the speed from 1 up to 4. If I expand this, we have the library with all of the assets we can use in our scene. For example, I can go to Vegetation and Landscape, Rocks, and drag in this rock number 2. To delete it, I can use the delete key. We can also use a landscape that can be sculpted or painted upon, but I won't be doing that in this video. In addition to the built-in Twinmotion assets, we also have access to the entire Quixel Megascans library. Let's try a 3D asset, props, farm, and you can download any of these assets, but you need to be signed in with your Epic account. You can do it from the file menu. I already downloaded this wooden wheelbarrow. Just like the rock, I can simply drag and drop it to the scene. On the other side, if I expand this section, we have the scene graph. The scene graph contains the scene graph menu, which is a visual hierarchy of the elements in the scene. For example, I can use it to toggle the visibility of the elements. Next, we have the toolbar. The toolbar provides access to the burger menu, the path tracer, material picker, the Move, Rotate and Scale tools, and the Toggle Space and Edit Pivot Point tools. The Path Tracer is a new feature in Twinmotion 2022.1 Preview. It's a new path tracing rendering engine that improves the overall fidelity of the rendering. The Path Tracer requires DirectX 12 and a graphics card that supports ray tracing. At this moment, it has some limitations. Some features are not supported, like the weather height fog or decals. You can find more information in the release notes. The material picker lets me select the material and modify its properties like color, reflection and more. Right mouse button click to disable the material picker. I'll demonstrate the move, rotate and scale on this wooden wheelbarrow. I can move it by dragging one of the axes or the bottom plane. I can rotate it around all of the axes and of course I can scale it. If I drag from the middle, it can be scaled uniformly, but also on an individual axis. This icon lets me toggle between the world and the local axis of the object. You can also edit the pivot point of the object if you want. Don't worry, it can always be reset. To move an object along a surface, press this area at the center of the gizmo 
and drag the object around. It will snap to the surface. This area is called the dock. We can use it to access most of the main tools. Import is for loading custom assets. Context for enhancing scenes with tools like the vegetation paint. You just drop a couple of models here, turn on the vegetation paint, set the diameter of the brush, set the density, and you can start painting. I'll undo these with the Ctrl Z. Later, I'll reuse some of the existing vegetation paint layers. To disable the tool, press the right mouse button. The settings dock lets us adjust the rendering, lighting, location, weather, and camera. In Twinmotion, it's very easy to change the time of day, seasons, or the weather. Let's go to location and try to play with the time of day. We can go from the afternoon to the night by adjusting this slider. I'll go back to the settings and play with the weather this time. With this weather slider, I can make it rain, and with the season slider, I can make everything covered in snow and the raining turn to snowing. In the effects, I can add some fog. If I turn on the path tracer, the fog and the snow particles will disappear. These are some of the limitations of the new path tracer. But that's really not a problem. I'll disable the path tracer for now and roll back all of the settings I changed. Smoke to 0%. Let's go back to summer and make it sunny again. The media dock enables us to create images, 360 panoramas, videos and more. To create an image, click on image, find a composition you like, and click on create image. When I click on more under the image thumbnail, I'll get the same options that are in the settings dock plus the format settings. I can change any of these, but they will apply only to this image. So for example, I'll change the season to winter. If I click on quit media mode, the scene will revert back. If I select the image from the media tab again, the camera will snap back to position and the season will change to winter. If you change your mind and you want to use a different camera angle, you can simply change the camera position and click on refresh. This updates the camera position. You can also rename, delete and duplicate the image. Creating a video is very similar. From the media tab, I'll click on video. I'll position the camera for the first frame and click on create video. This created the first keyframe. Now I'll move the camera to another position and click on this plus sign. This will create a second keyframe. Twinmotion interpolates the camera motion between the first and the last keyframe. Now I can jump to the first frame and play the animation. If you think it's too slow or too fast, you can change the duration of the animation right here. Right now it is set to 10 seconds. If you want to make a cut and add a new part of the video, just place the camera elsewhere and click on the new video part icon. You can also adjust the settings for the video same as for the image. I created the image and one video. Now I want to export them. To do that, I'll go to the export dock. First I'll click on image and select the image I want to render and export. I can select more if I want. Next I will add the video. I could also add multiple panoramas or presentations to the batch. When I press start export, Twinmotion will ask me where I want to save the exports and it will process the entire batch. Those were the very basics. If you want to learn more, I recommend you to check out the video tutorials on the Twinmotion YouTube channel. Feel free to explore this scene and play with it to understand how it was built. Now I will create the scene with the assets from Reality Capture and prepare three images for export. In the scene graph, I will select the entire project folder and press the delete key to delete it. Now I will use this empty space for placing the chapel from Reality Capture. So first I need to import it. I'll go to the import dock and click on this plus sign. I want to import geometry and I'll click on open. I'll find the chapel in the explorer select it and click open to import it. Now I have a couple of import options, but if you use the Unreal Engine export preset in Reality Capture, you can keep the up axis and the unit conversion set to auto. Now based on the size of the asset, it might take a while to import it. 
the chapel is imported and it has the texture also applied, but it's missing the normal map. To edit the material of the chapel, I'll use the material picker from the toolbar and select the chapel. Here I can adjust the overall color of the material. I can adjust its reflection and I can also change the scaling. In this case it would break the texture because it is not tileable. I can toggle if the material is supposed to react to weather and then there are the settings. Let's expand the settings. Let's go to bump and click on more. And for the normal map, I'll switch it from this generic normal map to my normal map from Reality Capture. If we go back to the settings and move with the bump slider, we can see how the normal map affects the model. By pressing the right mouse button, I will disable the material picker. I will keep the chapel where it is. The chapel doesn't have to blend with the terrain perfectly for the images. I'll try to hide the seams with the grass. I don't have to go to the contacts dock this time because I will use an existing vegetation paint. The one I will use is the Painted Vegetation 3. So let's select it and click on Vegetation Paint. If the brush is too large, I can make it smaller with the diameter slider. I am trying to paint out all of the empty areas and hide the seams. For now I don't have to be perfect. I can make a final pass before rendering the final images if necessary. Now I'll import the jug so I can add it to the scene. The process is exactly the same. I'll click on import, find the jug version intended for Twinmotion, open it and import with the same settings. I'll select it and try to bring it somewhere over here so we can see it. This jug has the original texture applied to it, but I want to use the texture from Mixer. I'll use the material picker to select the jug material, click on these three dots, duplicate the material and rename it to jug underscore v2. I'll click on more under color and change the texture to the one I exported from Mixer. The duplicated material is not applied to the jug, so I'll drag it over to the jug. I also want to add the roughness map from Mixer. I'll click on more on the reflection and replace the current texture with the roughness map from Mixer. I'll raise the reflection to 30%. One last texture from Mixer and that's the normal map. I'll go to settings, click on more under bump and import the normal map texture. That's it, now the material is ready. I'll keep the jug somewhere around here near the entrance. I'll just scale it up a bit so it's visible in the final shot. I will switch to the scale tool and scale it uniformly. Now I am going to start working on the composition for the images. I'll go to the media dock and use image number 6 as my starting point. I'll duplicate it and rename the duplicate to chapel underscore summer. I'll click on more and play with the camera settings. I want to increase the field of view to 90 degrees and turn off parallelism. Now I will slightly adjust the camera position and refresh. I want to see how it looks like with the path tracing turned on. That's not bad. Now I want to make two other versions of this image. I'll duplicate the chapel underscore summer and rename it to chapel underscore winter. I'll click on more, go to weather and move the season slider to give it a fresh frost and snow look. I'll disable the path tracing just for a moment. I'll go back one level and adjust the lighting. I will use a different sky dome which is also a new feature in Twinmotion 2022.1 preview. I'll click on more and choose a different one from the library. I'll go to noon, cloudy and I already downloaded this noon cloud 04. To apply it I'll just drag it to the scene. Now I can turn on the path tracer again and adjust the rotation of the sky dome to 100. I can also raise the intensity of the sound to 10. I'm okay with this look. However, there are some visible seams in the terrain, so I'll fix them. I'll disable path tracing 
and I will turn off the visibility of vegetation number 3. I'll select this rock and move it down a bit. Also this other rock and again move it down a bit. That looks much better, so I'll enable path tracing and the visibility of the vegetation back on. I'll go back to the multimedia dock and duplicate this chapel underscore winter and rename it to chapel underscore winter underscore snowing. For this last image, I will disable the path tracing because I want to use unsupported features like snow particles and fog. I'll go to weather and first adjust the season and then move the weather slider so it's snowing. In the effects, I will crank up the smog to 100% so it creates a very dense snowfall atmosphere. Finally, to export these three images, I'll go to the export dock, click on image and select these images. And that's all there is to it. Now I can just click on export. This is the final scene I rendered in Twinmotion. I made some small adjustments off screen to further enhance the result. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new that you can try yourself with your own scans. See you in the next one.